Okay, so in this video we're going to be looking at how to draw a vector in three dimensions. So in this case we're going to have a three-dimensional vector field. And as you may imagine, you're going to have three inputs, and then you're going to have a vector with three components. So let's start off by drawing the vector at the point 0, 0, 0. So this is just going to be a zero vector. So nothing is happening at the origin. We don't have any vectors. And now we're just going to have to make our way um, drawing point by point. So let's start by 1, 0, 0. So this is going to give you this. And then let's draw something like minus 1, 0, 0. So minus 1, 0, 0. So hopefully you, you can imagine what this is going to look like if you think about the two-dimensional field that we drew. Uh, if you extend this to the third dimension, you make this equal to z. Hopefully you get an idea of what this is going to look like. So let's do something like 0, 1, 0. We're going to get 0, 1, 0. So the really nice thing about this particular vector field is that any point that you choose is going to translate into a vector. So, so the vector components become the same coordinates as the point. So we're going to have 0. And then we're going to mix it up. So let's start with, well, let's do the set axis, of course. So you're going to have 0, 0, 1. So now you have a, a vector that has component 0 and 1 in the set direction then let's do minus 1 in the set direction so this is going to give you 0 0 minus 1 and then let's do a couple of mixed ones so let's do 1 1 0 and then let's do 1 0 1 And then let's do just another one. One, one, one. And let's start drawing some of these vectors here. So the first thing you want to do is, of course, start with the simple one. So this one, for example, moves one unit along the x direction, so positive x axis, and then it has no components. So it goes like this. You're going to start off at this point, and then you're going to move one unit like this. Then for this one you do the same, you're going to start off at minus 1 and then you're going to move one unit uh, along the x-axis in the negative direction. And then for y you're going to have this thing, so you're going to start off here, move one unit, then start off here, move one unit. And then let's see what else, well you have the same thing in the set direction. So this is a really nice vector field because it is actually going all upwards from the origin so you have this really nice thing going on and then if you do some mixed ones so for example at this point here you're going to have a vector that goes like that and then you can imagine that this this is going to be all symmetric so it's going to be radially symmetric about the origin so you're going to have a bunch of factors going up like that and then this is the point where it gets kind of interesting so if you start for example doing this one where you have 1, 0 and 1 so that means 1 unit so at the point 1, 0, 1 let me just locate it here 0 along the y and then 1 so at this point in space here you're going to have a vector that is going 1 unit along the x direction so it is going to extend like this and then 1 unit along the z direction so it's going to go out like this and then if you do the same for the bottom you're going to have a vector that goes out like that and then we're going to have the same kind of thing going on here. So you, this, all these vectors here, if you change the size, they're just going to be confined to the x, z plane. So they're just going to go out like that. And then you might have something in the bottom here. So it's a little bit hard to draw here because obviously I'm just trying to draw a three-dimensional vector field on, on this set of axes here on, on a blackboard. But hopefully you get the idea of what's happening. And then we can do the same, we can have a bunch of vectors. So you can imagine that in the end, if I draw, let's draw another vector here, that one is going to go out like that. Then here is going to go out like that. And then somewhere here, it's just going to go like that. 
like that. And then this whole thing is just going to look like the vectors are just increasing in length as you move a few as you move further away from the center from the origin. So it looks like there's some kind of explosion here. You have no nothing at the, happening at the origin, but then as you move right outwards, basically the, the vectors are increasing. So now let's open Octave for MATLAB and let's see how we can plot this. So when we want to plot a three-dimensional vector field, it's very straightforward. We do the same thing we did last time, but now we need to define a third axis to work with. So we have X, Y, and Z. I just made the limits the same and the steps are the same, so it looks nice and symmetric. And now for the mesh grid function, well, you're going to have to give it three input vectors. And then you're going to generate three matrices of coordinates, so x, y, and z. And the reason this transforms it into matrices is that when you're dealing with multivariable functions, you don't own, you need inputs that are not only uh, vectors, but they need to be matrices. So you need to cover the whole the whole grid. And here we're going to define our vector field, but remember we need to define it in terms of three separate components. So we can do it component by component like this or there's another way we can do it and I'll show you how to do it in a bit. So we start with this one, x component, y component is y and then z component is z. And now to plot it we're going to use the command called quiver3 which is essentially just the quiver function that generates a velocity plot that we used uh, previously but this one does it in three dimensions. So it takes three uh, input arguments and then it takes the three components of your vector field and then in the end what you're going to get is the following. So now you notice that you're going to have this massive vector field happening here. So obviously you have a lot of vectors. It's a little bit hard to see. But if you click on the R button here, this allows you to rotate the field. So hopefully we can see what is happening. If I go to this particular direction looks kind of nice. So you can see all the vectors are just eman emanating from this source. So this could actually be something like a light source. Because, you know, in, in, in a point light source, you have the rays of light just going off in, in every single direction, or the photons, basically. So you have this kind of thing happening. And then you can just rotate and see what's happening. So you can see if that if you... If you align it just right with your with your point of view, you can see that all the vectors are kind of just stacked up in columns. But that's just basically um, the way in which the vector field is drawn by the program. But the, you can see that the vectors start getting longer and longer as you move away. So if you were to change the step size to something like, let's try 2.5 on everything, you will probably see a less overwhelming vector field but it is a little bit clearer now so you can see all the vectors here a little bit more clearly so you have you can see everything happening here you can see all the vectors you can see it from different angles so it's all radially symmetric it doesn't really change much it, it conserves the same kind of shape and this is a really nice thing to do, especially when you're dealing with problems in, in things like electromagnetism and fluid mechanics and you don't really know what's happening. If you want to visualize your vector field, just put it in the program and this will give you a better idea. So for example, in this particular case, if you were to put a particle somewhere here, the particle is just going to be ejected upwards like this and it's just go, gonna follow the same path as these vectors. Essentially, if you put it at the origin, it's unlikely anything's gonna happen because you see that the arrows are just pointing away in every direction so it's it, it's as if the particle at the origin would just get pulled in every direction simultaneously so it would just stay stationary but as soon as you put it here it's just going to get pulled outwards so hopefully this has given you a better idea as to what vector fields are how to plot them in three dimensions as well as two dimensions and now we can start defining some of the operations that we can perform on vector fields. So essentially vector calculus, the, the basis of it is just performing calculus operations on vector fields and that's what the rest of the series is going to be focused on.